I never really see him not coaching. I mean, maybe one day he'll you know, sit down and just observe. But I just don't see that. Like, I don't see that happening. Coaching is like preaching. What I like about coaching, it gives me an avenue to actually have a church and a venue that I love so much is basketball. I can actually put scripture and basketball and life together in the name of Jesus. That's why I love coaching. He's a great coach. We, we like how he teaches especially the basketball players. He's <laughs> through his, uh, his teachings and uh, he, he brings them to the next level. We like his development. He never just says, okay, we lost that game and that's it, like that, that you're done. It's like you didn't, you didn't put effort in and how do you expect to go, I don't know, to this college or to this job or have this kind of relationship if you don't put effort in and he's saying if you love something like like we love basketball you have to you know you have to work at it continually like you, you're never done and that's one thing that I, I will always take from I should have gave him flowers before he died that's the attitude I want my flowers now I want my flowers now I don't want to wear your casket I don't want you when you bury me I want my flowers now you send me my flowers now. I want them later. Because it don't mean that I can't smell them, I can't eat them, and I can't read them. I need my flowers now. That's what I want from you. I want my flowers today now. You call the floor, send Coach Rice some flowers. Don't wait till I die. This is where it kills me. Y'all saving yourselves. You got something going on in the hotel I don't know about? Is a party going on? There's something else, there's something else that means something more to you day, then go do it. But if you don't want to die in this, this is what happens. This is what happens. That's effort. They, are they better than you? Come on, let's give them a little bit. Let's give them credit, credit but let's not think better than we're 30 points better than no team. We ran our offense better than we ran all year. So, where we will lose places is in our, in our thinking and our effort. Ain't that right, girl? You, I love you because you're happy. That means you might have played hard. You played hard. I don't think that's what's bad. I think now, Lord's saying, we got to step this joint up. But I want my flowers to death. I want my flowers to death. Coach told me was one of the most amusing coaches I ever had. Like, entertainment-wise, he made coming to basketball practice work every minute. It wasn't really a dog moment in practice. He overemphasized everything, but at the same time, I mean, look at me that. So I really can't complain. It will always be, say, you need to make it happen. No one else can make it happen for you. Not him, you know, not the assistant coaches, not my teammates. Like, if I wanted to be on the court, I had to do it. And so, as soon as I, if I wasn't playing, if I wasn't getting a lot of playing time, get in the gym, say, get in the gym right now. How many shots did you shoot today? And those are the questions I always had to answer to him. It's just, you know, sometimes it was annoying. And then I, you know, I was in college, I wanted to do what I wanted to do. But he was never wrong about those things. He was never wrong. If I had to dig a hole and I didn't have a shovel, I'd use my hands. And if I didn't have hands, I would use my wrists. And if I didn't have wrists, I would use my elbows. And if I couldn't use that, I'd use my teeth. Because that's how bad I need to dig a hole. That's where I'm at. But what I'm trying to get you guys is to get to the point in your lives where you start realizing that you got to just use more than just your regular means of doing what you got to do to get done. Sometimes it ain't about what I taught you. Sometimes it ain't about what you know. It's like what you would do for love. 
And when you say there's a limit, when you put a ceiling on what you're going to do today, that's it. Well, I think people need to learn how to um, take hey. some shots on the, at their own time at home. They can't just come to a game and shoot. They have to practice it and think that ball's going to go in. That's a key thing to work on your own at home. It doesn't just happen in the practices. It doesn't happen when you get to the game. Or does it show you up? Number one is they supposed to have fun. I mean, you don't have fun playing. It really becomes a, a bad situation if you don't have fun playing. And if you have fun playing, then you'll work hard. But a lot of times, they mistake, they get they get their priorities mixed up, and they just don't work hard, and then it's no fun, and then it becomes a, a, a you know a, a not a good situation. So we always want them to have fun. Number one, and then number two, work hard. Number three, the results of having fun and working hard. Regardless of what happens, it don't really matter because they had fun and they worked hard. So that's the number one thing. It's really not always about basketball. It's about yo, your work ethic and where you're at. Toby's coaching Thanks. is weird. <laughs> sometimes he's excellent and then sometimes he loses it. I done seen him throw the clipboard on the floor, the hat across the alley. But overall, he's a good coach. What I love about Toby is that the fact that he knows how to get the kids to listen to him and trust him and motivate them. And that's one thing Toby does have. If he has any weaknesses, as one great is that he's a very good motivator in keeping the kids going and believing in him and, you know, being dedicated. I think one of the most important things I learned is that it doesn't matter how much time that, it doesn't matter how much time you get in the game, it matters what you do with the time that you're in the game. So I remember my senior year, I wasn't doing anything, I wasn't playing, and he said, oh, you want to come play the first tournament? I was like, sure. I played like two or three minutes every single game, but I didn't care, like I was happy just being able to play. And the college coach was still looking at me like, oh, why isn't that happening? And she only had two or three minutes, like, oh, she's already signed, she's just going to play. So it doesn't matter how much time you're in the game, it's, it's what you do. I feel like that's who he is. I mean, he's, he's Coach Toby. There's a lot of people who just know him as Coach Toby. I think he wants what's best for the girls, like all the time. My dad coaches with uh, passion, pure passion. He coaches because he loves being there. He loves helping the girls. He, he loves, you know, see, like trying to help them get scholarships and get to college and, and do something different with their lives that maybe they wouldn't have the opportunity if it wasn't for basketball or, or whatever it is. And even if, if they don't plan on going to college to play basketball, he loves to just have them out there playing and having a great time. But I, a lot, sometimes the girls complain because they're like, he's always yelling, he's always yelling. And I, I used to complain too, you know, I used to, it used to bother me and then I grew up and I realized, man, he's not yelling because he's, he's really angry at you. He's yelling because he's in a moment where he's just really passionate about the game and what he's trying to teach and what he's trying to show his kids, so. Oh, I love that music so That was probably the best experience I had. I mean, you gotta get it from the time I started playing to the end of high school. And I love Mr. Toby. All right, so if a college coach was watching us against that other team, who would he take? Who would he or she take? If, a, if an interviewer was interviewing you for a job, and that one of those girls went in for the interview, and you went in there based on your 30-something point performance, who would the interview take? If you was dealing with trying to find a husband, somebody good, and he dealt with a girl that was 30, Degrees or 30 points better than you, who would you think he'd take? All I'm saying is, you keep feeling this scale on the fact that ain't nothing gonna happen to you because you didn't die, nobody went to jail, and you don't have to walk home. I have not gotten to this point in my life to take this sitting down. Somebody gotta pay. Somebody got to pay a price. Because if I'm not changing your life, or you don't want that to happen to you, then I shouldn't be in your life. You need somebody better. So if you don't respect me, or 
this ain't where you want to be, you got to make that decision on your way home. Because what I see today, we can't go that far. Ain't no pizza, Pepsi, and popcorn in the world get us past this. Movies, videos, nothing. But you better start thinking about whether or not there are other options. The debate team, the band, the cheerleading. You might want to start thinking. But in basketball, this ain't going to happen to me. Ah, 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 ah,